Today, we're going to take a look at the mining performance of the RTX 4060. Upon release, the car didn't really impress anyone, and the mining community in general did not pay much attention. Well, I needed a reason for a new video, so I thought to pick one up and see just how well this card performs. Does it have a place in our mining operations? I suppose that answer will depend. So let's take a closer look at the card's performance on some of the more talked about projects. Like before, I will be using my test bench, which draws approximately 48 watts with no GPU. This number will be taken into consideration when narrowing down the power draw from the wall. Let's start with a lithium. There's no denying in January of 2024, the price of a lithium has grabbed a lot of people's attention. Using Regale Miner 1.12.2, the card obtains 1.14 gigahash at 83 watts, allowing for an inefficiency of 13.73. Let's compare that to the previous generation RTX 3060, where it can produce 817 mega hashes. We can clearly see that on this core intensive algorithm, the 4060 delivers a solid improvement. I'm now going to share the performance of the 2060 Super and the 1660 Super. Let me also point out that I rounded down to represent the hash rate, but rounded up on the power draw. Let's also keep in mind that each of us will have a different experience based on our hardware and the silicon lottery. Over the last year or so, the core intensive projects have gotten more attention simply because it takes less power to run the cards. So I'm going to introduce Carlson and Radiant. Again, we're presented with the 4060 achieving the best results, delivering both higher hash rates and better efficiency. Next, over the last year, the term proof of useful work has been thrown around thanks to Flux and Dynex. Let's see how the GPU delivers on these two projects. The 4060 delivers decent results, however, at a much smaller margin compared to the last generation cards. For Dynex, let's notice that the 3060 may actually be the better card, and this is most likely due to the wider 192-bit memory bus and additional 4 gigabytes of VRAM. If one is looking to build a rig exclusively to support Dynex, then the 3060 is the card to go with. Plus, one will benefit with the 3060 when mining with Compile. Speaking of which, we can see that the 128-bit memory bus bites the 4060's performance in the ass, seeing the hash rate drop to only 17. However, efficiency is still relatively the same to the 3060. Lastly, I will put the numbers up for Nexa and Ergo. The 4060 will benefit most on Nexa, while the 3060 will remind us that it still has a very good place when mining Ergo. For me, I think it's an interesting time when it comes to choosing what GPUs to add to our operations. A few years ago, it was simple. Buy a card, any card you can find, and point it to Ethereum. That's not been the case since the merge, and while there are several new projects to choose from, there is no clear winner. And that is actually a good thing. Yes, it's simple to have one project that gets all the attention and makes all the money. However, it's not a viable long-term strategy if one is looking to grow with the Web3 development. While we do need to find profitability, it's best to find it among dozens of projects, not just one. Who's the RTX 4064? It's not for everyone, especially if you're looking to invest in the upcoming cards from NVIDIA, such as the 4080 Super. That said, not everyone is able to or is comfortable dropping $1,000 per GPU. At a price point of $300, the 4060 may be a good option for someone who's just getting into mining. However, we can't ignore the option of buying some of our GPUs on the used market. Using Flux as an example, 
the 4060 costs $6.66 per solution, or the 3060 is costing $6.13. Is that enough of a savings to justify buying a used 3060? Let's go a bit further. In the idea that the rig is meant to primarily be used for flux, we'll add the 2060 Super, where the cost per solution is down to $3.80. Now let's flip the table and look at the dollar to hash ratio for a lithium. Again, we see the 2060 Super stands out to offer the best value to performance ratio. I've not spoken much at all about the 1660 Super. It clearly is the least expensive option for new miners, and while its efficiency is respectable, the overall performance gets in the way when it comes to the topic of card density. I'll conclude the video by suggesting that the 4060 is applicable to a small farm operation. However, we are in an era with so many options to choose from. Are there better options? Yes, but with a higher price tag. I suppose now more than ever, the RTX 3070 from the previous generation continues to hold the title of a card that is best described as a jack of all trades and a master of none. Do you have the 4060? If so, comment below on how you have chosen to use it. If the video provides some insight, a hit on the like button is appreciated. And to help grow the channel, consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching.